Innocent Waters versus Imo State Government. This business clash is seriously something else. And he's trying to go about to set, uh, create sentiments here and there. I came also from the private sector. We don't throw away money. We have to get value for money. So if you think that it's by going around, rather than bring a mobile workshop, which he promised, in fact, his promise is that uh, he will put a mobile workshop first on ground for us to be servicing the vehicles, and then he will build a permanent workshop. So I thought it was uh, a good thing patronizing our local manufacturer. And uh, he has refused to live up to expectation. So there's been quite a buzz online over a recent video posted by Cornell Osigui, the head of marketing at Innocent Motors, and a response from Ambrose Mwagogo, senior special assistant to the Imo State Governor. More like a business clash between Innocent Chairman and Imo State Governor. This whole situation seems to be putting the spotlight on the relationship between Innocent Motors, IVM, and the Imo State Government particularly concerning a business deal that stirred mixed reactions as we speak. So, here's the story. Colonel Osigwe made claims online, calling out the Imo State government, led by Governor Hope Uzodima, for not honoring their side of a business transaction with IVM. Huh. The deal reportedly involved over 5 billion naira contract for procuring vehicles. Sounds like a big deal, right? Well... Things got really heated when Osigwe's posts implied that the government wasn't holding up its end, and this sparked serious reactions across social media. In response, Ambrose fired back, accusing Osigwe of spreading false information and not being professional about the whole thing. According to Ambrose, the Imo state government had already paid over 3 billion naira, which is more than 60% of the contract to IVM, despite the company not fulfilling its part of the deal. What's this part of the deal we are yet to find out? Well, just stay tuned and you'll find out. And we placed the order for him to supply us a vehicle for over 5.3 billion naira. Uh, incidentally, he has, there's no workshop in Nimo State where his vehicle can be repaired. And part of the agreement was he will put a workshop in place. As I speak to you, 70 percent of the vehicles are granted. We've paid him over 3 billion naira. And no workshop to maintain the vehicles. The major sticking point was IVM's promise to set up a service center in Imo State for maintaining these vehicles whenever they get 40. And the amount of vehicles we are talking about is over 150 vehicles which was supplied to the Imo State government, which as of now hasn't happened. Instead, the vehicles have reportedly developed Ford and people, including government officials, and civil servants are left with unserviceable cars. Ambrose didn't hold back, questioning why Osigui was dragging the governor online instead of addressing the actual business agreement. He called out Osigui's behavior, even challenging him to publish the full business contract for the public to judge. According to Ambrose, if IVM had a legitimate case, they should have taken it to court and not to social media. Meanwhile, this is the post the head marketer made that is causing serious-ish right now. He said, Lest we forget, about 150 vehicles supplied to the Imo state government under the leadership of Hope Uzodima, valued at over 7 million US dollars, remained unpaid. Based on the devaluation of our Naira, if the money is paid today, it will now be worth 1.5 million US dollars. The conversation should be how have innocent vehicles been surviving under our harsh economic conditions and heavy debts being owed to the company. Okay, the situation raises some big questions, especially about the state of business relationships in Nigeria. Shouldn't both parties honor their side of the deal before throwing public accusations? And why hasn't this issue been resolved through proper legal channels? Plus, with Innocent Motors being such a major player in Nigeria's automotive industry, particularly with their new electric cars, shouldn't they have a more streamlined and professional approach to handling such disputes? The Imo State Special Assistant replied him by saying, To set the record straight, 1. Imo State, through the Executive Governor, has clarified the facts on several occasions. In the video attached to this update, the governor clearly stated that it was IVM that had not kept its part of the bargain regarding this business transaction. 
Two, the Imo state government procured a number of vehicles from IBM worth over 5 billion naira, with both entities having business agreements that before the first tranche of payments, IBM would establish a service center for the vehicle's maintainers. In keeping with their terms of agreement, the Imo state government provided the required enabling environments for the company to establish their workshop in Imo state. Three, additionally, the Imo state government paid over 3 billion naira out of the 5 billion naira contract sum, even when IVM had not provided a drop of shovel of sand for their proposed workshop site. They also promised to provide, in the interim, a mobile workshop to cater to the hundreds of vehicles the Imo state government bought from them. Four, as a direct result of IVM's inability to keep their part of the business bargain of providing a service center in Imo state for the procured vehicles, over 70% of the vehicles have developed fault. This includes the vehicles donated to Imo State Civil Servant for the free bus scheme, operational vehicles for security personnel, and those for senior appointees of the government due to the unserviceability of the vehicles. 5. How can the weapon fashioned against IVM, aka Colonel Osigwe, be online shamelessly dragging the governor of Imo State? when their company has not even fulfilled any of the business agreement. Okay, now, so this is very funny. Huh. Number six, you agree to provide a mobile workshop for servicing the vehicles pending the construction of the permanent workshop. Which of these did IVM provide? None. This situation brings into focus the critical role of communication and trust in business transactions, especially when they involve significant amounts of public funds. Whether or not Colonel Osigwe's online outburst was, unwar was warranted, the public remains interested in seeing if Inosi Motors will step up and fulfill its promise. It's really a big clash between these two bodies. Let's see who finally wins. This is Ewan People TV. No, there's nothing wrong with Inosi Motors. You know, ethics. Every preservation has ethics. At the beginning of the government, uh, because of the insecurity in Imo State, we had cost to buy a lot of vehicles. And I decided to choose Innocent because he's a, a local manufacturer, just to patronize him. And we placed the order for him to supply us a vehicle of over 5.3 billion naira. Incidentally, he has, there's no workshop in Imo State where his vehicle can be repaired. And part of the agreement was he will put a workshop in place. As I speak to you, 70% of the vehicles are granted. We've paid him over 3 billion naira and no workshop to maintain the vehicles. So at this taxpayer's money, I'm saying, come and, as promised, come and do the workshop so we can repair the vehicles and get value from them before we can pay more money. And he's trying to go about to set, uh, create sentiments here and there. I came also from the private sector. We don't throw away money. We have to get value for money. So if you think that it's by going around, rather than bring a mobile workshop, which he promised, in fact, his promise is that he will put a mobile workshop first on ground for us to be servicing the vehicles, and then he will build a permanent workshop. So I thought it was uh, a good thing patronizing our local manufacturer, and uh, he has refused to live up to expectation. But it will be resolved. I advise him to allow wise counsel to prevail. Okay.